friends. So we are here today with part two of working on this folio. Um, so I did a few more things in between videos. Um, so let me just show you here. So I've got, I, I don't know if I showed you that I put in this cabbage dog coloring page with this owl. Um, I've got the pocket here with the tag I added. Um, and I've added this pocket down below and I've added the ephemera to it. Then over here, um, I created the first of the flips. So this is um, a flip out and it's got more of a kit back here with the um, more subtle tones. And then I have put a pocket here, kind of lined up some nice more mushrooms on this page. Um, and then I folded up one of the envelopes. I've got to put something inside there, but it will go here. And I added a tab from the kit. So um, I'm just kind of making things as I go here. And at the back, I added this big pocket yesterday with this butterfly here. And that's on the flip down, which I think I showed you the tip down. I can't remember, but if not, um, it's back here. And I added this owl that I had in um, a beautiful like watercolor book. So lots of owls and that makes me really happy um so then i was just working away on this piece from the kit i'm going to put it here as a pocket um and then i had this really grungy piece of paper from a bunch of dyeing that i've been doing and i want to put it on here like a little cluster maybe with a little bit of fabric or something i don't know or maybe we need like a little focal point there of some kind um let me think. Hold on. Let's grab the um oh, these. Okay. Let's grab all of these um bits and bobs here. I don't want to cover up too much of that. I don't know if I have something that's right for this. We've got a couple of little tickets here. No, I think they'll blend in too much. We definitely need something that's not a part of the kit that's like a little bit of a different color scheme. Let me check my bits and bobs in here. Um, can probably just find a few cool things anyways in here because I just keep stuffing more and more little things in here all the time. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe a stamp would be good and I've got a really nice Australia one right there. Um, I'm just going to finish looking through here and see if there's anything else that I think would be a good addition to this. Let me throw one of those butterflies in as well. Okay. Actually, this little die cut. Okay, so those are a few things that I think I'll be able to use in here. Um, yeah, okay. Put this away. Okay. Oops. Okay, so let's sort out what we want to use with this now. Um, Okay, so this will be here. Maybe the negative. The, the stamp. Actually, that, I think that. Yeah, okay. And we'll save this stuff for another clustery, clustery bit here.
going to put the art glitter glue on this little fine thing. Okay. purposely try to grungy grungy dye some paper that's really dingy like this um, this piece is the result of like going in the dot on the dye trays so many times in like coffee and cabbage and um, food dye and all sorts of dyes so it got extra grungy but it's pretty awesome okay Let's put that there and then maybe um, where's my ink? Right there. I just want to ink this stamp a little to just uh, get rid of the starkness of the white. And then I may actually go over this with a little bit of ink too because um, it's quite a bright blue. Not that I don't like blue. I think I've just created a grungy kind of feel here. So we will take that through the whole cluster. There we go. Okay. So now let's just glue this down. This is actually like um, designed to be a coin envelope, but I'm, I'm using it for something else, like a file folder style pocket. So That's the nice thing about these kits is you can really make them your own. And I'm loving this project because I feel like it's really using the kit. I've printed, I think, three, um, three versions of the kit, one on cardstock and like sort of two on uh, regular copy paper. And I've really made this kit be the central focus of this whole thing. Um, so then I think over here I'm going to add maybe this little blue butterfly. And I'm also going to be adding some splatters to this of like maybe another color of paint or something when I get further into the project, I think. Sorry, it just takes a minute to peel this little sticker. Film stickers are a little difficult sometimes. Okay, right there just to add something. You saw this, you saw this. Okay, so after I got the flap done, I still have to put something in this pocket. I have to find something. Um, but I added this pocket down here that's sparkly and collagey. And it says there was an old owl lived in an oak. Um, so then when you open it, I've got, I've added this large piece of a macro photograph. Um, it has great colors that go along with this. Um, so that's in there. Then um, in the pocket, I ended up using um, this hawk feather with the owl here and backed it with some nice uh, handmade paper. So that will tuck on in there. So now we will move on to this page that I'm currently working on. So I'm just using some file folder and another piece of the main paper um, to just cover this here. Um, to create a flap. Okay. And then I also, it's going to go on here, like so. And then I also need, um, I think I need something else. Okay, so yeah, I have to cover the back of this next. And I'm trying to decide if I want to do it with kit paper or maybe some cabbage dye paper. I see this beautiful piece just staring at me, so I think I will go with it. <laughs> so this one, the flap will be visible, the inner flap, so we will add glue to it as well. And I'm going to stitch around this whole thing after, so I'm just using a glue stick to just adhere the paper down. Then 
I want to make sure I get that fun transition spot on the paper. And we again need to cut out. Sorry if you can hear calamity upstairs, that would be my kiddos, and my husband is moving furniture around to wash the floor. My channel is always filmed in, filming in the house of noise, it's just, it's a life reality. <laughs> of here okay so this will be covered this will be here then this this side folds no this side folds okay so it's gonna go like that all right so next I have to stitch this on um, so that it can then go there okay I'm gonna stitch it one moment Okay, so I'm back. Sorry for the breaks again. I think I have a little uninterrupted time now. Um, so what did I do? Um, I attached the flap and we added a couple things here. And then I attached this other flap, attached some nice sparkly paper. And now we have the fabric pocket at the bottom here and now I am working on what I want to do with the rest of this page so I'm thinking maybe um another kind of a flap um possibly from this side possibly from the top I'm trying to decide if I want to do like just sort of side to side flips and flaps rather than up and down that's kind of what I'm thinking um I kind of like the back and forth flaps more than the up and down, but I don't know. They're all cool, but one is easier to manage and also easier to film, and that's the back and forth. <laughs> so first I think I want to just jazz this up a little more, um, make it a little bit more interesting. It's already so beautiful, so I'm trying to think about what I want to do. Um, I'm thinking about the fur of the moth and maybe fabric. But I don't have anything on hand that would be furry. I'd have to go to my stash for that, but I do have a couple things. Um, this is why I create off camera so much. Because <laughs> you'd be waiting around on me forever. But let's, um, I want to go ahead and just ink, the, ink this up a little. Get some nice blue ink. Also to think about what kind of flap I want on this page. Even something gold maybe would be nice with this moth. I have this. This beautiful, this beautiful relic that's in my studio. And that could be kind of nice at the top of this. Hmm. Yeah, I think I like that actually. Yeah, okay. So let's go ahead and cut it out. Oh, these scissors are so terrible. I need my fabric scissors. Although it's my own fault because I totally have destroyed these scissors mostly <laughs> because I was cutting a tin with them the other day <laughs> and then I'm like oh why aren't my scissors working hmm. how did that happen who did that yeah that would be me because I'm like a horrible scissor terror okay so let's just chop the top off here
There we go. Let go. Yes, I think that could be kind of cute. All right, I'm going to stitch this on, so give me two seconds. Okay, we are all stitched on. So that can happily go in here now. And I will decide, I think, to do maybe a wide, a nice wide flap to go over this. Um, but I might have it come from this side so that it flips this way instead of out of the book. That's the plan. So I need this folder. And it can go from about here to I'd say about here. get rid of these scissors we don't need 10 pairs of scissors just do a little tidy up because my desk is getting a little cluttery here too many inks everywhere and that's the biggest problem there we go then one thing I do like about working on this folio or folios in general though is they're kind of like an open project book so like while you're working you've got this like nice little project book going on I have no idea where my oh there it is my little ruler is I've been like lately doing this thing where I accidentally like just like fling things across the room like they fall off the desk but they don't like just stay near me they like fall and roll away so like I found my metal ruler on the floor today and also my camera battery um so I was tidying up because I recently sewed this pin cushion that I stuffed with some walnut shells that I got and the walnut shell container um, had a hole in the bag which was not so lovely. I think I need to trim this a little more. I do. So I had to vacuum to get rid of all the walnut shells. And that was no fun. Okay, oops, hang in there. Yeah, that would be nice there, I think. And it has that nice tab up top. So now we get to cover this page. In a lot of ways, a folio is a lot like an altered book in that you're doing a lot of like, you know, covering up pages and stuff. This could be cool on here. So what do we have? Um, I'm thinking the white, the white moth would be nice. So, we will just actually I wonder how close is this to being the right size for this oh that would be cool but can I do it the other way around so that I get the white moth on the outside because I think here yeah, we have a black moth here hmm Now I'd have to do from the, okay, no, that won't work, but that's okay. So let's just get this glued. <clears throat> okay. So I don't know that I will do videos through the whole process of this folio because it's quite time consuming. Um, but I did want to share a little bit of it with you just so you see how nice it is to just work with these kits and how fun they are. I want to go a little closer to the edge here. I want to go right to the very edge. Here we go. And I think I might even create like a pocket on the back of this flap. 
so far my flaps have just been for writing space, but I think I'll do a pocket on this one maybe. Okay, that's cute, cute, cute. And then on this side, I was thinking of using maybe the other moth, and it could be the pocket, and we'll put some kind of background paper here. I think, I'm just gonna look for a paper real quick. for this single piece of gold paper that I know that I have, but I'm not going to struggle here. I'm going to use this fun cabbage dyed piece actually because it's really neat. So let's just now cover this back side. <clears throat> and on this side I have to cover the inner part of the flap because it will be visible. And then I probably will stitch around this um, and then come back and add this as a pocket to the side. Actually, you know what? I should do that first. So what I will do is I'll use Art Glitter Glue um, to exactly where I want this to stick on here. Oops, that's a lot of glue. Right there. I'm just going to get a little bit off here because I don't want it to like smudge everywhere. And then we'll come in with this and lay it down. And I think I need a little more at the edge because I didn't go all the way out to the edge. There we go. Okay, let me trim here and the bottom. have this pocket here which I will put a little a little notch in and I think I will ink this with a bit of black soot So 
pick this up a bit, give it a little outline. side as well. just going to quickly stitch around this. I'm just going to go around these edges here um, and then I will return. That's good. And then we can lay this down where we want it, which I think will be right here. See a little tiny piece of paper. I need to just trim a little extra off the back here. That's better. So yeah, I think right there. Okay. And then I'll come in with a little more glue between the paper that I laid down and the folder just to make sure that that stays down. something for this pocket. So I have this little envelope that could go in there. Um, what else would I want to do? What else would I want to do? Hmm. Lots of great journal cards. But I'm thinking maybe something a little bit bigger. I also have the option of making um, a journal card from these. The mushrooms would be nice. Maybe, maybe. I also need to sort out what I want to put in those envelopes. So maybe I will use the mushroom and I will create something from the owl to put into the envelope that is on the front page. Because I have a large envelope that needs um, some ephemera. So let's just start by tearing this here. Set the owl aside and we'll see how big we can make this. Um, Okay, 
So now I will make a piece of ephemera with this. We'll just make it a little more interesting. And then in here, I kind of like the idea of like folding this up. Trim off the uneven bit here. And having it in here as a little journaling space. So there we go. Then over here, let's build something with this. Let's get the portfolio out of the way for a little bit. Okay. So let me see what I have in my scrap area here so that we can make this more interesting. Um, I have this paper that's like a handmade paper that I got in. Um, it was actually a gift my husband gave me. It's from Koreatown in Toronto where they have a little stationery store there that makes like unbelievable handmade paper. Um, I'm just going to cut, sorry if I'm off camera, this is like a little hard to do. Okay, there we go. That's what I want. But yeah, it has these yellow and white circles. And I'm thinking it's very, it feels very moony. And I'm thinking maybe putting that on here. Is that too bright? Do I need the white one instead? I think I might. Yeah, I think I need a white one. So let's go for, I was trying to like compare sizes here. One that's slightly smaller. But also complete. One would be perfect right there I think of course it has to be in the middle you know I think the yellow is just a little too bright yellow for something else that's fun. I'll actually just put it up here and it can go in my use it up pile. Okay, so now we have this. Yeah, that side out. All right, let's commit to this. I wasn't sure how the glue would act on here, if it would tear it or not. So I'm kind of trying to be a little bit careful. But I think we're okay. Let's just fold this before we get all gluey. So right there. It does get a little transparent, so it doesn't completely block out that there's mushrooms there, which is good. And if you wanted to, you could actually rub it until you tore away the, the paper. Okay, so I like that. The texture is very cool. Um, I'm thinking I need something else on here. Just looking at my scraps, my little bits and bobs here. Hmm. What else? What else? A little bit of jelly printed book page. Um, 
That might be kind of cool on the back, actually. Yeah, let's do that. Now we go back to the front here and look at what we need. Something down the side, maybe. Hmm. Hemp's geometric owl in my scraps. actually really neat. So let's ink it up a little. Really fun. Okay. So then maybe a word snippet would be good if we could find one relatively quickly. Sorry if I lost you for a moment there. I had to change camera batteries. So I found this little sparkly iridescent flower that I think I want to put right there. And I was just trying to see if I could find some kind of um, a little snippet, word snippet, hmm, I don't know if I'll be able to find one, I need to cut more word snippets. Fairy Godmother, <laughs> Little Robin Redbreast, Literature, Spidery Patterns of Lightning, and Sunny Summer Afternoon, I don't know, Speckled Toad, Enchanted Forest, Hair in the Wood, Before Darkness Fell, that could be nice, Before Darkness Fell. I just want to tell a little story with this piece of ephemera, and this I think will do that. Okay, and then just throw a little ink on there, and we will use Fabri-Tac to glue down this little flower. 
actually I may stitch first before I do that so I will um do that we're all stitched now I will glue on my flower here There we go. Let that glue kind of dry for a moment. I was thinking I didn't want to run th stitches through here, but I don't know if it's going to stay. It's been a little difficult. We'll see. Just have to hold it for a moment. Um, okay, so then I think I also want to put some gilding wax on here, but I think I'll use the bronze maybe instead of the typical kind of light gold. This is a more darker, more bronze kind of gold. And I think that will add a little something to the edges. Maybe even around the edge of this moon a bit. I've been endeavoring to get my fingers clean since doing a bunch of paper dyeing, and here we go with gilding wax. <laughs> I just never want to have to use brushes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's such a nice color. Yeah, I think that just really kind of adds a little bit of copperiness. Okay, this is just um, the Pebeo Jetio Gilding Wax in Renaissance Gold. The one I usually use is the Sizzix Luster Wax in Gold um, or Oro Dorado. Um, it's just called Gold, I guess. So yeah, there, but there is a big difference. Okay, I'm happy with this, I think. It's done. And I think that will stay put, actually. I'm pretty confident about it, so. All right. Um, we have to put this away now into the folio. Get the glue out of the way here. Okay, so this will go in here, as so. Perfect. So now we have writing space up here, um, and we have this nice flip, and under here we have this tag. So I think I will call that quits for showing you the folio for now. I've done a few extra things in it that I'm not sure if I showed you. So I don't think I will do further videos on this <clears throat> until I do the final flip through, which you will actually see probably first if you uh, follow my videos in order. Um, this, this will come out afterward because I want to show the final design team project before I show you these process videos. But I'll show you a little bit of what I've done at this stage anyhow, even though you probably already saw the flip through. So we've done the cover, obviously. We did that together. Then... We did um, some of the collaging together. I showed you my process of how I tore up the kit and basically personalized this whole folio to be in the colors and the signature of the kit, really. So we have the pocket here, pocket here, large um, coloring book page that I cabbage dyed, over here a pocket, ephemera, um, and then here we have an envelope in a pocket on a, a tip out, pocket back here a couple of things um then this pocket here and this piece of ephemera with this beautiful hawk feather here and over here the two flaps and then this beauty down here and i'm not sure if i want to do something else here or not um then this flip we just did with this and this And over here, this is a fresh page I need to work on. 
Over here we have this piece of ephemera up here that's going to be a tuck up spot. And then we have this pocket here at the back that's on a flip. I have to put some ephemera in there. Um, and we have a, a tip down, which maybe you can't see there, but it is there. Up here we're going to be putting some nice paper that's going to be bound in there. And then on the inside of the folio, I actually didn't even show this to you, um, but I did do a little bit of work here. So this is actually a real leaf. It's a beautiful leaf um, from a sycamore tree, or sorry, a tulip tree, my apologies, a tulip tree. And I trimmed it a little into a pocket and um, added this ephemera inside. This whole thing has been um, like mod podged, so it's it's very much going to just stay like that. Um, so then we flip this this away, and then we come come over here. Oops. Sorry, my tiny desk. Okay, we did this. We did this. I have to go back over here to show you this side now. But I haven't worked in here yet, but I still will have these two pages. So I still have a whole lot to go. And hopefully this gives you a little perspective on like how much work a folio is. Because I'm imagining I'm probably going to be like putting twice as much ephemera in here as there is now or more definitely more flips and flaps and flops here and there um, I want this to be I want to use all of the ephemera from the kit in here so it, it's going to get quite busy and quite fun and I'm looking forward to just working on it so that's it for me for now and thank you for joining me for this two-part getting a little bit of a folio done um i i don't know that i would do an entire folio series um where i did a whole thing i'm not sure maybe but for now i think that's a nice taste of what, a, what doing a folio looks like so we will talk soon if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel please do leave me a comment say hello let me know that you're here um and we will be back very soon with something else fun Take care. Bye for now.